I tried to vlog yesterday and I was too tired to think because I was trying to talk about how we got here, which has been just a crazy long few days. So we left Grand Rapids at four o'clock in the morning on June 7th and drove to Chicago where we got on a 10 hour flight to Istanbul. Then we had a 19 hour layover in Istanbul. So we spent the entire day out in the city. We were exhausted, got back on another 10 hour flight to Kuala Lumpur, arrived in Kuala Lumpur, and we actually spent two nights there because we knew we needed some rest and we did in a day in Kuala Lumpur, which was really fun and we got a lot done. But then we only had four hours of sleep before we had to get on our next flight to Tawau, Borneo. After Tawau, we were picked up by a driver from Borneo Divers, the resort that we're staying at, and they drove us an hour to Semporna. And then we had to wait for a boat and that boat took us another hour boat ride out to Mabel Island, which is where we are now. We just arrived at our resort, Borneo Divers and Water Sports on Mabel Island. And we checked into our villa. Pence is okay, I think. We have a pool view. So this is the jetty, which is basically the center of all the dive operations here. And then out in the water, you can see this is called the Sea Ventures rig. It's an old oil rig that has been converted into a resort. After over three days of travel, we were barely keeping it together, but thankfully, the only thing we had to do that day was an easy shore dive so we could get acquainted with our dive master, Roy. I knew that we were in for an awesome week when we saw so many animals just offshore at Borneo Divers House Reef. Roy was an expert at spotting tiny things like nudibranches, shrimp, and frogfish, so even when there wasn't anything large around, there was still plenty to see. After getting out of the water, we decided to just relax for the rest of the day since we were both deliriously tired, and I started to make friends with the jetty's new kitten, Simba. We did our first shore dive, and even just the house reef here was spectacular. They've sunk in a bunch of ships to dive, so there's wrecks out there. We saw two sea turtles. One of them was absolutely ginormous and it just sat there. It was so chill, so I got a lot of great footage of it. A flying gurnard, which is something we've never seen before. It looked like it had wings. So then today we have three boat dives around this island and the neighboring island. Our first dive of the day was at Mandarin Valley, where there were towering artificial reef structures. We had our only encounter with bumphead parrotfish on this dive and found a couple more sea turtles taking a nap at one of the artificial reefs. We just got back from our first boat dive of the day, which means it's surface interval time. And the nice thing about diving around Mabel Island is that we get to just come back to the resort for our surface interval. They've got water and snacks and coffee here for us, and we just get to kind of relax instead of sitting on the boat. An hour later, we were back in the water at Ray Point where we saw a cuttlefish. Any day that I get to see a cephalopod is one of my favorite days ever. Mm -hmm. 
Now we're on our second surface interval of the day. Our second dive was awesome. We saw a cuttlefish, which is so exciting. We saw more turtles. The turtles here are so chill and they're so big. So now we've got a longer surface interval. We're not gonna get back in the water for a couple more hours and we are going to eat some lunch. The best part of our dive at Lobster Wall was definitely the colorful mantis shrimp we found inside a little cave. Just look at that adorable little face. Back on shore, we clocked some more cuddle time with Simba, and then Vince took a customary jump off the end of the jetty. Today was three boat dives around Mobile Island. It was really fun. I'm getting tired, but we still have one dive left. Vince and I booked a night dive. This is gonna be our first night dive ever, and we're both really excited to see what it's like. We got distracted watching a water monitor waddle around the pool deck, but managed to make it to the jetty in time to catch the sunset before meeting up with Roy for the night dive. Diving after dark was a totally different experience. In the daytime, everything takes on blue and green tones because of the water, but in the dark, our torchlights revealed all of the animals' true colors. The next day, we had three more boat dives around Mabul and neighboring Kapalai. Our top animal sighting of the day was a hawksbill sea turtle eating coral off a wall that we were drifting along. This was our first hawksbill of the trip. All of the other turtles we'd seen up to this point were green turtles. just finished up our third boat dive of the day so that's gonna be our last dive for today because I want to be a little more well rested tomorrow when we go to Sipadan Island. Now we're hiking the trail that goes all the way around the island. This is a turtle hatchery for sea turtles. Mabul is a very small island, so it didn't take us long to walk around its perimeter, checking out all of the other resorts and its two fishing villages along the way. Today's the day. 5.30 in the morning, we're headed down to the jetty, we're going to Sipadan. I could barely sleep last night because I was so excited, and now it's finally happening. Sipadan day! <laughs> Sipadan Island is a protected marine reserve, and a limited number of permits are allocated to divers each day. Because it's so heavily protected, it's known as one of the best dive destinations in the world for its pristine coral reefs and pollution-free dive sites. Once we arrived at Sipadan, we checked in with the island's authorities and then Roy briefed us on our first dive of the day, which would be at Coral Garden. True to its name, the reef at Coral Garden was thriving. In fact, it was the loudest reef I've ever heard, which is a good indicator of the ecosystem's health. Most prominent was a cacophony of crackling noises coming from snapping shrimp. It was a lot like the sound of bacon sizzling on a frying pan, but turned up to 11.
We also saw several white tip reef sharks at Coral Garden. We ate breakfast back on the island during our surface interval and then got back onto the boat to ride to our next dive site, South Point. Our captain located what we were looking for before giving us the okay to get in the water, and we dropped into an awe-inspiring scene of a huge school of big eye trevally, also known as jackfish. It was as if time stopped as we floated as still as possible and watched the school ripple ever closer to us in what looked like a meticulously choreographed dance. Eventually, the jacks engulfed us, making me feel like I was a part of their school for a few fleeting moments. We just finished up our second dive on Sipidin. The first dive was really cool, the reef was amazing, and then there were a bunch of white tip reef sharks. But then the second dive was one of the coolest things I've ever seen underwater. It was a giant school of jackfish. They were in like a tornado basically. They were all swimming together and then they were far away and they came towards us and then we could see individual faces of the fish. Absolutely incredible. Now we're back on the island for snacks and then one more dive. Only a small bit of Sipidan is accessible to visitors, but the beach that we were allowed on was an absolute paradise. Our last dive, which was at Barracuda Point, also happened to be the best one. Even before we went underwater, we could see turtles coming up for air at the surface, and as we descended, we realized that they were everywhere. Eventually, I decided that it was pointless to keep counting turtles, but we saw well over 20 over the course of the dive. We also saw a few more white tips, but our goal on this dive was to find a school of barracuda. Roy accomplished this by having us follow him closely as we alternated between drifting with and swimming against the strong current. This was a massive physical effort, but it paid off big time when we finally found a glittering school of silvery barracuda. We also got a neat bonus when a school of batfish swam right past us. It had been the best day of diving I've ever experienced, and I was really sad to watch Sipidan shrinking on the horizon as we headed back to Mabul. The third dive we did was crazy. The current was super strong and we were going back and forth between drifting with it and fighting against it. It was exhausting, but we saw schools of barracuda and batfish and there were so many turtles that it got boring. There was no point in counting. There were more sharks. It was the best thing ever. Back at Borneo Divers, Vince and I made the most of our last evening there by paddling around on one of the resort's clear kayaks. Then we got back in the water at the house reef for one last dive on our own. By now, we were familiar with this dive site, so we were able to find the wrecks and lots of animals really easily. surfaced, Simba was waiting at the edge of the dock for us to pet him.
this is it. It's our last day on Mabul. We're just relaxing at the jetty while we wait for our ferry to take us back to Simporna. It's sad, but at the same time, honestly, we're both a little dived out. My ears are starting to feel it. One last snuggle with Simba before we leave. The weird thing about leaving Mabul was that my brain had sort of decided that vacation was over and it was time to go home. In fact, we were only about halfway done with our trip, and I had to shift my mindset from island vacation to jungle adventure as we traveled north to Sandakan. We took the local bus to get to Sandakan this morning, and it took two hours longer than expected. Now that we're here, we've checked into our hotel, and we've come to the English tea house and restaurant for high tea. This is actually a really fitting way to spend our afternoon because I'm supposed to be in London right now. That didn't work out. So we came to Malaysia instead. tea, we returned to the Saba Hotel where we spent a relaxing evening swimming and sipping cocktails by the pool. The next morning, we would be starting our rainforest adventure with Borneo Eco Tours. Our tour started early with a visit to see semi-wild orangutans that are being rehabilitated to someday be released back into the forest. This morning we're at the Sepalak Orangutan Sanctuary. Right now we are waiting for feeding time, but we've already seen two baby orangutans. This orangutan is actually wild, but he comes in for feeding times. He's 20 years old. He's got massive, beautiful face plates. Look at him go. So big. I think we've had a really lucky day so far because before we even started our tour, we saw a rhinoceros hornbill. That was amazing, but to see a wild, huge male orang with giant face plates, I didn't even think to hope that we would get to see that. Now we're at the Bornean Sun Bear Conservation Center. The sun bear is the smallest species of bear on Earth. They're critically endangered. In fact, there's not even a good count on how many exist still in the wild, but the conservation center has 44 bears. Sun bears are named for the patches of white fur on their chests, which are said to resemble the sunrise. They're great climbers with strong claws, and they use their extra long tongues to reach honey and insects inside of trees. That afternoon, we took a boat ride out to the Sukau Rainforest Lodge, right on the bank of the Kinabatangan River. Sukau Lodge was part of the National Geographic Unique Lodges of the World program. The program was discontinued in 2020 for the same reason pretty much everything was discontinued in 2020, but the Sukau Lodge is still an amazing place to stay. We got elephant-shaped towels. That's a nice little touch. Vince is really excited. He didn't know what this was going to be like because I took care of the booking, so he is very happy. <laughs> we had plenty of time to settle into our room and have tea at the Riverside restaurant before heading out in search of wildlife. Here we go on our first water safari. Ready to go. This first boat ride was spent watching troops of proboscis monkeys jumping around in the trees at the river's edge. Proboscis monkeys are an endangered species endemic to Borneo and are distinctive because of their large noses. Back at the lodge, we quickly discovered that nightfall only brought more opportunities to look for wildlife. We walked around the lodge's boardwalks, finding a buffy fish owl and watching bats chase insects until it was time to go on a night river cruise. The night cruise started out strong as we got to witness a drama unfolding between a very bold palm civet and a buffy fish owl.
We also found several beautiful birds and were able to get much closer to them than we could during the day. In the morning, we got up early for another river cruise, and this time we were lucky enough to spot a wild orangutan, making this our second wild oran of the trip. Later, our guide Fernando took us on a walk along Sukau's Hornbill Boardwalk, where he taught us to identify some of the poisonous plants of the area. We're looking from the shape of the leaves and also from the veins, and then the tree we know that because the, this tree can fall until 60 to 80 meters. Yeah, the sap is black for the uh, big animal they will try to avoid. So the antidote, that's very simple. First is, you can meet with a doctor, okay? But for the local, they just use tapioca. We attended a lecture about orangutans and then took a break to swim in the pool before heading back out onto the boardwalk on our own. Over here I can see maybe five or six hornbills just flew by. We're about halfway through our second day of exploring in the Kinabatangan River. Basically, we're just doing as many walks around the lodge's boardwalk as we can because you never know what you're going to see out here. This right here is a footprint trail made by a pygmy elephant. That evening's cruise turned out to be the best one yet. We spotted a couple of maroon langurs, another type of monkey found only in Borneo. But the highlight of the day was watching a herd of Borneo pygmy elephants emerge from the thick bush and come to the water's edge. We found pygmy elephants. There are several back in the trees. We're waiting to see if they'll come out. This was my first time seeing Asian elephants, and like every elephant encounter, it was just incredible. These elephants were definitely small compared to their African counterparts, but small in elephant terms is still pretty large, relatively speaking. I loved watching them use their trunks to uproot grass and branches. They would even whip the grass around to knock clumps of dirt off of its roots before eating it. It's always amazing to me to see elephants interacting with each other in the wild and to get to see their complex family structures. They live in matriarchal herds, and it was really clear while we were watching them which one was the leader of this herd. Vince and I ventured out onto the Hornbill boardwalk alone after dinner in hopes of finding a tarsier or a slow loris. This turned out to be wishful thinking, but we did find some fun creepy crawlies and a big pile of fruit and leaves that had been dropped onto the boardwalk by a troop of silver langurs. Actually, just standing here right now, you can still smell the monkeys. This is the same troop of silver leaf monkeys that made that massive mess on the boardwalk yesterday. Our morning cruise on our last day gave us some really nice views of long-tailed macaques and a sighting of a red morph silver langur. We also saw some saltwater crocodiles. This is the biggest saltwater crocodile we've seen yet. I'm about to make a proboscis monkey batik. Here's my reference for color. 
So if you want to make it realistic, it's somewhat there. Uh, I took an afternoon batik painting workshop while Vince ran away to do literally anything else while he waited for me to be done. We met back up once Vince was sure he was safe from having to participate in a craft and took one last swing around the Hornbill boardwalk. All of our diligence finally paid off just as the afternoon rain started pouring down from the sky. That wasn't a problem though because the lodge has plenty of sturdy umbrellas for guests to use at any time, so we were well prepared when our orangutan swooped down from the trees. At first we thought there was just one oran, but we quickly noticed that she had a tiny baby clinging to her belly and another juvenile trailing behind her. Orangutans typically stay with their mothers for about 10 years because there's just so much that they need to learn in order to survive in the rainforest. This means that even though twins are rare amongst orangutans, a mother can still have multiple young under her care at the same time. This infant was still heavily dependent on mom, but the juvenile was expected to problem solve and figure out how to move through the trees on its own, resulting in some downright comical antics. That evening, we took our last river cruise, and we saw several species of hornbill, a pigtailed macaque, and got one last glimpse of the elephants before it started pouring down rain on us. The next morning was the start of our last day on Borneo, but we weren't quite done in the jungle just yet. After we left Sukau, Fernando took us to the Rainforest Discovery Center back in Sepulok. The tall boardwalks and viewing platforms gave us a great view into the forest canopy, and we got to see some huge trees that were part of the primary forest before the area was ever logged. A spectacular view of a female rhinoceros hornbill right now. It's one of the big five of Borneo, and this is the closest we've been to one all week. We even encountered one last wild orangutan hanging out on the boardwalk. It was hard to believe that we were leaving Borneo. We'd had such an incredible time seeing the beautiful wildlife of Saba, both in the forest and underwater. It was truly a dream trip for an animal lover like me. Diving at Sipadan Island had lived up to all of my expectations, and we'd seen more animals on our rainforest safari than I'd even dared to hope for. It was sad to leave, but at least we were leaving with amazing experiences that we'll remember for years to come. This definitely feels like we're going to tribal council. Yeah. <laughs>